This is video four in the CIS C133 LAN switching and wireless series. This video will be about VLANs. The first several videos were about telnetting and port security and giving a IP address to a, a switch. So I've put up the commands here in case you uh, needed those for the past couple videos. So uh, this set of instructions tells you what the commands were and this over here tells you what those commands do. So in order to tell that to a switch we have to give it an IP address. And these three commands here, interface VLAN 1, IP address, and no shut, that gives the switch an IP address to interface VLAN 1, therefore we can ping it or telnet to it. We then set up telnet with these commands. We say login local, username password, username Joe password blow in order to uh, make people log in with those credentials and we make sure that we have the enable secret uh, password set so that those people that do tell that in can actually configure the switch and then we turn on port security here something that's a little bit different in here I went through and put on port security for all 24 ports and then I just shut down the last four or last 20 so in order to set on to turn on port security we we said switch port mode access, which told the switch that this was going to be uh, an end user on that port. We turned on port security. We told it the maximum number of IP, uh, MAC addresses to support would be one. If there was more than one, the violation would shut down the port. And to learn the MAC address, we wanted the sticky command. That should be Mac sticky. Then I shut down the last 20 ports. So this video will be about VLANs. And before we get to configuring it, it's probably important you understand what VLANs are used for. In large networks, we, we have a lot of broadcasting traffic. And while we don't have the problem with collisions anymore with full duplex on switches, we still eat up a lot of bandwidth with broadcasts. So it's nice to keep traffic for one group of people on one network and the other group of people should have their traffic on another network. The problem is, is that we're all physically and geographically connected together. So the, the problem arises is how do we keep the traffic separate while we're all connected to the same switch? So breaking up the broadcast traffic is one thing. The other purpose of VLANs is for some security so that we can keep the traffic separate between the VLANs. So those are the two main purposes for VLANs. Now we'll configure them. First thing we have to do is actually create the VLAN. So we'll create VLAN 10 and then we'll give it a name uh, sales. We'll create VLAN 20, give it a name, uh, we'll uh, say it's sh engine for short for engineering, and then we'll create VLAN 99, which would be uh, the admin VLAN. So now if I do show VLANs show VLAN, I can see where I have three new VLANs and these are the names. But you also notice that all the ports are actually assigned to VLAN 1. So the next assignment then is to put those ports in the VLAN. I have listed here which ports are going to belong to which VLANs. And notice here I have a place for trunk on FA24 and I'm going to put another switch up here which will also have a trunk. 
and we'll connect the two switches using that trunk. So now let's assign those VLANs to those trunk ports, or those, uh, those ports. So we do a config T. I go into the port FA01, and it says that FA01 is supposed to belong to VLAN 10. So switch port access VLAN 10. Port 2 is VLAN 20, and we said port 3 is going to be VLAN 99. Now, right now, port 3 on this switch is actually connected to the router. Um, we will have to uh, take care of that a little later. Now, if I do a show VLAN, I now see where my VLANs are connected to the three ports. Now I'm going to grab another switch and several more devices here. And wire them up. This guy will belong to VLAN 10. He's in FA01. VLAN 20. And VLAN 99. Now we need a crossover cable to connect the two switches. And this will be on port FA024. And we'll connect to FA024. Now remember, FA-024 over on this side is still shut down. So now I'll have to go ahead and configure this device with the VLANs, just like I did before. VLAN 10, name sales. VLAN 20, name engine. VLAN 30, name admin. Now I'll go to interface FA01. And switch port. Access VLAN 10. Port 2 will be 20. Port 3 will be 99. And, oh, I forgot, uh, VLAN 30 is not the admin, uh, VLAN 99 is the admin. So, um, the nice thing about that is it already created a VLAN 99. So, we will put that port in VLAN 99. Now the problem is we've got to take out VLAN 30. So if I do a show VLAN, I've got an admin VLAN 30. So I'm going to have to say no VLAN 30. And I'm going to have to say VLAN 99 name admin. Okay. Now, hopefully, that should do it. There we go, VLAN 99. Now we have to configure the trunk port. So before we get too far, I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to have to take off port security on FA24. If I don't, uh, I'm going to get a bunch of IP addresses, or a bunch of MAC addresses here, and it's going to shut it down, so we don't want that. So I'm going to say no switch port mode access, no switch port port security. Now if I do a show run, um, woo, we still got 
got the uh, sticky command. So we will get rid of that. Show run and F A zero twenty four is just a normal port. Now we will do a no shut on that port, and we will have to set it to be a trunk. So the command is switch port mode, and instead of access. We're going to say trunk. Now, if I do a show VLAN, notice uh, port 24 is in no VLAN. It's not in VLAN 1, it's not in VLAN 10, 20, or 30. Now there's a command show interface trunk. And I should now see where FA024 is now trunking. Now it's auto negotiative trunking with the other side on the other switch. So if I do a show interface trunk, you'll see that they're now trunking. The only thing I have left to do now is to change the IP scheme for the VLANs. So part of the process of dividing up the traffic is to put each workstation in a different network. So those workstations that are in VLAN 10 belong to the 192.168.10, those in 20 belong to 20, those in VLAN 99 belong in VLAN 99. So I now have to add IP addresses and change these IP addresses. So I'm going to pause the video now and go ahead and do that while you do that. Now that I've configured the workstations, let's look at their IP scheme. <coughs> so in port FA01, I have 192.168.10.1 with a gateway of 192.168.10.254. In FA02, I have 20.1 with a gateway of 20.254. And in FA03, I've got 99.1 and the default gateway of 99.254. Workstation here is 10.2, 10.254, 20.2, and 20.254. Now with this configuration, I should be able to ping from VLAN 10 over on this switch to VLAN 10 over on this switch. Let's try that with uh, ARP kind of slow across the... Okay, good, successful down here. Let's see if we can go from VLAN 20 to VLAN 20, and that's also successful. But now watch what happens when I try to ping from this device, which is in VLAN 10, to this device, which is in VLAN 20, even though they're right next to each other. Uh, it fails. So that's one of the reasons we have VLANs is so that we can separate that traffic. So in summary, here are the commands for creating VLANs. Um, VLAN 10, give it a name, 20 and 30. Actually, I guess that should be 99, shouldn't it? And then assign those to the ports, then create a trunk. So this completes this video for VLANs.